Hey, how's it going? And this is really two videos in one. It's a remake of a tutorial I did a while ago on event dispatching. That video was made with good intentions. It was really meant for beginners. And what this tutorial is going to show is that casting, generally speaking, is probably bad, especially in terms of memory consumption in your game. But if it's just a super small game and it's just a little project, it's probably not that big of a deal. But as you get into more sophisticated projects, you want to be more efficient and stay away from using casting. It's weird because in a lot of Unreal tutorials themselves, they'll show that the casting node is used a lot, but it's best to stay away from casting. Instead, use blueprint interfaces to communicate or even soft references, which is its own separate thing but I just wanted to remake this tutorial and show you something real fast of how inefficient casting is, how expensive it is to use. So I've just got this widget blueprint right here and I've got a cast to note. It's not doing anything, it's just in the scene. I don't even need this in here. I'm just showing you how much memory this takes up. So if we come in here and we click on my new widget blueprint and I go to size map, it's taking up 208 megabytes, right? In my old tutorial, I used a cast to node. In this new one, I'm not using it at all. So I'm going to show you how to do that. But just look at this. If we go back into the widget blueprint here, and I just delete this, right? I don't need it. I just want to show you the expense it's, it's taking on the system. And then I hit play. My, my progress bar still works like it's supposed to. But now, if I escape and come out of here, look at the difference. <laughs> it's hardly anything. So you can see that casting is just very, I don't know, what would you compare it to? It's like you're uh, something excessive. It's, it's overkill, for way overkill for what you need. It's like bringing a, a nuclear bomb to a street fight. <laughs> I'm going to remake the tutorial right now. And all this is is just... Uh, a progress bar that I click one but instead of using the cast to node I'm going to show you how I can do it with the blueprint interface instead so I'm going to go ahead and start new right now so we'll go to file new project and I have to tell you I mean this all of this of what I'm showing you this took years to figure out this wasn't something that came intuitively or was easy to understand it's taken years to come to this understanding of all this. So anyway, I'm going to go to Window, Load Layout, Default Editor. We'll go Content Drawer. We're going to Dock in Layout. And I'm just going to leave everything, their default names, in the interest of time. I'm going to actually be going kind of fast. So the first thing we're going to do is create a widget blueprint, real simply, a progress bar. So I'm going to right-click, go to User Interface, Widget Blueprint, go User Widget, and we're going to double-click into this. And I'm going to go ahead and dock it so I know where it is. And then I'm just going to get a canvas panel. And even these are expensive. I know you're not even supposed to be using these. And then we'll go progress bar. And we'll just drag that into the scene right in the middle. And I'll just stretch it out. And then over here on its percent, we'll give it one so that we can see it. And that's all we got to do there. Now I'm going to go ahead with this created and I'm going to create a blueprint interface. And this is a very effective way uh, to make things efficient. So not, not a user widget, I'm sorry. A blueprint interface. And I've struggled with these to understand these. We'll leave it called new function. And all we're going to do is come down here on input. And the input, we'll leave it called new parameter. We are going to make it a float. And this is our going to be our channel of communication. And that's all we have to do. And then we'll close this and just remember it's called new function. Now the key on the blueprint interfaces is that the receiving, it only has to be implemented on the receiving side. So this blueprint, this blueprint interface is seeable by all the other blueprints, but it only has to be implemented on the one that's receiving the data. So that's the widget blueprint here. So we double click into it. We go on the event graph here. We come up to class settings. This is so different from the tutorial. And we're going to go implement an interface here. And we'll, it's called new, right? New interface. There it is right there. And this is almost like a custom event. And so we don't, believe it or not, we don't need any of these nodes. 
and then all you have to do is double click onto this and this is going to bring in the value and trigger the progress bar so this is shockingly simple so we're going to bring in the progress bar now get progress bar and here we're going to go set it's so simple this way and memory efficient so we just click in there and put that in there and that's all we have to do and isn't that simple and then look we're going to go back into now our blueprint interface here and we're going to create our widget so we'll come up here and go create widget and the class is going to be our new widget blueprint and then we're going to add it to the viewport so add to viewport And that's all we have to do. And then the last thing that we're going to do is we got to create a float variable over here. And I'll just call it float. And we'll go float. We'll make it instance editable. I'll go compile, save. I'm going to set the value to one because the percent goes from zero to one. So 50% would be 0.5. And then what we're going to do is I'm just going to drive this off a keyboard press. So I'm going to go keyboard and we'll just drive it off the one. And then off of here, I'm just going to go ahead and get and drag set. And then the next thing, the last thing I have to do is I just have to right click and search for our new function. This one right here, new interface function. And the, the target is actually our, our widget blueprint. So the target, this goes in here. Wait a sec. Sorry. This goes in here. This goes in here. And then all I need off of here is a subtract. So we're going to take subtract. And this is going to just be 0 0.01. And so this goes in here. And this exec pin goes in there. And that's all we have to do. And I'll go compile and save. And now if I come in here and I hit play, if I hit the one, let's see, what it, why did it drop all of a sudden? Oh, maybe because I didn't set the value. Sorry about that. So here on the float, now I set it to one. Oh, I didn't plug it in. Sorry about that. Okay. Yeah, point one. There we go. So now if I hit play, see, it's working. And that's all into it, that there is to it. So just know that in my previous videos when I used casting, it was for more instructional purposes. But when you get into game development, you really want to switch probably into using interfaces and getting away from the casting. So I have mixed feelings about casting because I've used it so much in the past. It's like a, I don't know, it's just like an old friend from the past because when I started in Unreal, a lot of the tutorials that I followed from Unreal themselves used casting. So I just got in the habit of using it, but it's really a habit I probably need to break. I don't look down on casting. I just look at it as it's a kind of a very expensive thing to use. And it's probably overkill in a lot of situations. So it's just an adjustment that I'm making. And where I can, I'll go back in some tutorials and try to fix it so where I'm not using casting. But generally speaking, casting is probably not good. But just for, like I'm saying, if you're just learning, you're just getting started, or it's just something real basic, simple that you're making, it's probably okay. But it is expensive in terms of memory, as you can see here. So anyway, thanks. Take care. Have a great day. And I'll talk to you next time.